police and the impacts report dominated the headlines in January. In his New Year's address to the nation, the Prime Minister revealed that the Cabinet of Ministers was in receipt of the impacts probe into the deadly police shootings that led to the suspension of U.S. aid. There is, unfortunately, one matter that must be brought to conclusion in the days ahead. It is the allegations of extrajudicial killings against certain members of the Royal St. Lucia Police Force during the years 2009-2011. I wish to confirm that the government of St. Lucia has received the report from the team of investigators. I confirm as well that the Cabinet of Ministers is deliberating on the contents and implications of the report. Relatives of some of the men killed called for the findings to be released in order to bring closure. Well, I feel fine about that because I well want justice for my brother and thing because I'm missing my brother bad because nothing for my brother. My brother was there. It would be better for me. The Prime Minister would reveal more on the reports in another address to the nation in February. On January 13th, Services at the St. Jude Hospital's outpatient clinic were cancelled due to a chemical spill in the institution's clinical lab. Medical director of the St. Jude Hospital, Dr. Carlin Radix, explained that the suspension was temporary as officials worked to contain the spill and scrub down the facility. Which included our outpatient services um, at the clinics, the lab, physiotherapy and some of our office areas um, so that persons wouldn't be exposed to the fumes. Hospital officials made it clear that there were no injuries related to the spill and that it was contained in the shortest possible time. Tourism numbers for 2014 were unveiled in January and showed record-setting performances in 11 of the 12 months. This included a 6% increase in total stay over visitor arrivals over 2013. And despite a few setbacks in 2015 that included the closure of two properties, the tourism sector recorded stellar performances, and when the final tally is taken, St. Lucia is expected to surpass the record-breaking 2014 arrival figures. At the end of January, the main opposition United Workers' Party held the first of two public protests for 2015. The demonstration was held to show dissatisfaction with the policies of the SLP administration, and grievances included taxes, gas prices, and the unemployment rate. You have made a statement. That's right. And whether you are a supporter of the United Workers Party, the St. Lucia Labour Party, or no party, your statement here speaks louder than anything we can say on this platform. I was proud to see you coming out because we called you up not necessarily to a match of the United Workers Party but to a match to protest the things that Labour had been doing to the people of St. Lucia. And I am proud of every St. Lucia from the little school child I saw with a placard that said, no money for school, no money for medicine. The second month of 2015 saw the Constituency Boundaries Commission recommending an increase in the number of constituencies on the island from 17 to 21. When the boundaries were last changed in 2001, We were recommended even then to move to 19 seats and we decided to hold off that move. We have seen two census reports since and the information from the 2010 census is clear. A 65% increase in our population between 1970 and 2010, the last time we had a change in the number of seats. The requirements of our constitution at achieving population parity must also be respected. You either obey or disobey your constitution. Choose. As a country, we can no longer delay on making changes that are necessary in the interest of democracy and the proper functioning of what should be our most sacred of institutions. The Commission's recommendations are based on demographics. 
Dr. Anthony stated that the recommendations will, among other things, seek to ensure proportional representation. The redrawing of the electoral map will assign equal numbers of inhabitants per constituency. Mary Isaac made it clear in February that she would not step down as CSA president. This after members at an extraordinary meeting convened at the CSA Secretariat voted in favor of requesting Isaac's resignation. Part of the process is that the executive must sit and look at the petition before them. That was not done. That has not been done. And I am, from what I'm seeing, the petition is not a genuine petition. It's a cut and paste affair. So we would have had to sit and determine whether the petition in, its, in the first place is authentic. The embattled union president would eventually resign, giving up the trade union movement for politics. Her resignation letter was dated May 26. The water and sewage company Wasco in February urged St. Lucians to brace for another island-wide dry spell in 2015. Wasco has taken the proactive position that in anticipation of a dry spell, which is feeding off the dry, the extreme drought conditions we had last year, we need to begin to advise St. Lucians and take measures as well to ensure that throughout a period that may be dry, we would be in a position to sustain um, a supply of water to all communities in St. Lucia. And that is critical for us. That's our job. That's what we do. And the public, they hold us responsible for doing so. The measure proved to be timely. By May, the minister with responsibility for water, Dr. James Fletcher, announced an island-wide water-related emergency from May 20th to July 31st, 2015. Three people lost their lives after being swept away by the sea on the Independence Weekend. One of those was a young boy who became known as Little TG. Terrell Elibox, who lived with his grandmother in the community of Auger Viewfoot, was on a church picnic when, according to family members, a man came up to his grandmother and said he had taken the boy on his surfboard and stated that the young boy fell into the water and could not be found. His body would wash up on shore the following morning. The little TJ case would spark heated national debate. A Canadian, Sahab Jamshidi, was charged with causing death by gross negligence. He maintained that he was trying to help the child after seeing him struggle in the water. His trial is expected in 2016. That same Independence Weekend, two brothers, 34-year-old Kervin Darcy and 36-year-old Mervyn Darcy, were swept away by waves on the Latok Beach. HDS News Force met up with the Darcy family outside the morgue at Victoria Hospital on February 25th. We identified our body already. They opened the bag for us. The, but the sea, the sea, the stone eat some of his body already. So. I realize that's my son, and the next one's still missing out there. So I don't know. I've been coping okay because God make us, and He taking us when He want not us that do ourselves. So the body of the second Darcy brother was never found.